Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the respected dignitaries, distinguished speakers, honorable participants, and the loving audience and beautiful people presents here from all around the globe. I, Ms. Nada Ratkovic, IAU board member, country director, IAU Croatia, the president of Research Center, IAU, welcome you all to the second international Conference on Climate Change ICC 2022 by the International Internship University with 100 countries, 150 speakers and 1000 participants in five days. Topic, science, solution, solidarity for a livable planet. The event for all the educators around the globe. Yes, today we are at the five day. We are at the last day of this five days event. And as we said before, the first international conference on climate change, ICC 2021 was a grand success by our great project director, vice chancellor, Ms. Corina Sujda from Romania. And now today we are here on the second international conference on climate change 2020. The most important challenges today we face is to stop climate change and getting the worse. Right here and right now, protecting planet starts with you and we can make our planet more sustainable. IAU recognize global call for solidarity, science and solutions for all. And the ball is now in our court. There is a lot we can, we must, and we do to make to our world, to make it energy consuming and more climate friendly. Today, our planet is our future. Yes, a science solution, solidarity for a livable planet. And we know that there are many reasons why, like example, the renewable energy is our answer to a healthy, livable planet. The COVID-19 pandemic has thrust the health to the center of global in steadily expanding ways. Sorting the science and if we ask the science, me, Nada Ratkovic, a science, a researcher, academician, said that each year we have more important scientifics called, but it called the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, releases to the report on scientific evidence of the climate change. The world's most influential and respected climate science contribute to this. They assess tens to thousands of scientific papers to update the world on the state of the climate plus options to tackle this global warming and to change it to the greens. Changing with the climate, whether we like, it is a true solidarity, our solidarity, our organization, our spread of the COVID-19 diseases and deaths in early 2022 lead the World Health Organization as we know, and United Nations Secretary, the General Antonio Guerreras declared the pandemic. And we know that that was the most challenging crisis we have faced since the Second World War. And science, these leaders of science are following the poor science to focus first on the tests of the protecting people, lives and livelihoods. Solutions, what solutions? This amazing four days before, we hear a lot of solutions. We hear a lot of solutions of our amazing, brilliant, eminent speakers, our students, our honorific guests, all were enriching and enlightening us with the new solutions, how to work, how to protect, and how to stop this climate changes. Moreover, many leaders are connected to this current crisis. And we all here, I can say around the globe are working here and IAU recognize this. And as I said, IAU 
last year had the first conference ranking on the climate change. After that, the International Sustainable Development Goal, uh, uh, Goal Conference. Then let's plant the tree now again. And IAU is working a lot on this, uh, on this, uh, I can say, uh, crucial uh, world problem. Now, I'm pleased and honored to present our organizers. Who is that? That is IAU, International Internship University, a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs. Globally, it is a trusted name for quality training programs and is committed to provide better and virtual education to all the young learners of the globe. IAU is metamorphosing the conventional education system by cutting down the additional costs and providing access to more than 1,000 plus courses and internships to their e-learners across the globe with the help of its 1,000 plus global educators. In a short span of time, IAU has spread its wings in 195 countries, six continents, under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Sir Piyush Pandit, a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades, providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. IAU has formed its four councils, namely Women Entrepreneurs Council, International Student Development Council, International Youth Development Council, International Councils of Educators. The main objective behind the councils is to provide support in every respect to the students, to the youth, to the women entrepreneurs and educators. IAU is coming every day with new events, training session, conferences, projects, and you all are invited to be a part of IAU. Me, Professor Nada Ratkovic, as a president of IAU Research Center, thinks if you have ever thought about how world needs to be and how the world will be without education, research, science, innovation, technology, or any development of anything, then the IAU is the right place for you. Now, today, uh, I'm not alone again. Uh, these days, I have, a, I have a great master's of this conference. Uh, yesterday, I had a great master, a great student called Aisat Ruxana. Uh, Aisat Ruxana is an yes. I am here. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay, okay. I will present you. Thank you. Hello, uh, everyone. I hope everyone is doing good right here. And I'm very happy to be the moderator for this session again. So, well, um, we are right here on the last day of the International Conference on Climate Change, the edition number two. And today, as it's the last day, it's the best day as well. And we have a lot of guests right here who have been here uh, throughout this entire session. And today, right here, let us start with the first speaker. I am very excited to call out Dr. Frolin um, from Philippines. Uh, yes, Dr. I'm Frolin Di uh, I would like to say a few words about our great uh, Dr. Frolin Mobo. Uh, he is uh, coming from Philippines. He's a great researcher, researcher by heart, and he is uh, at the International Human Rights uh, Organization. He's an academic at large. He's a country director. And here in IAU, he is our education ambassador. And also he has a me, all you with his human, uh, his academy where he is uh, working and our great Dr. Frolian Mobo is really working a lot on this uh, on this problem on preventing the climate changes. So we are we want to welcome our great Dr. Frolian Di Mobo. Welcome. 
uh, good evening and also good morning from uh, other areas in the global community. So uh, thank you for the for inviting me for this session. So uh, let me share my uh, PowerPoint if it's possible. Mm, yeah. You can, you can. All can share the presentation. So, is it visible now? So, uh, part of that, so how can we solve the climate change? So, nowadays, especially uh, in this uh, time of pandemic, global pandemic, uh, it's very important to have some climate change solutions because as part of its commitment, of course, of the government of our country in the Philippines, we have the Climate Change Commission. Uh, they have some agreement with other commissions from other countries that stated in April 21 that because of the rising uh, changes of the greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, a target from 70% established for four years, it's very important. That's why this is to develop policies and uh, coordinate uh, to other uh, task force to inform about the climate change and also part of the uh, law which is being uh, implemented here in our country is the Congress and other government approved the climate change. Uh, of course, our commission which was established in 2009. Uh, that is, of course, to address the national climate change and action plan, which is created by the CCC in response uh, to our current problems that we are facing, which will be uh, the roadmap for all climate change projects in the Philippines as part of the solution. That's why the government plays a crucial role in accomplishing these development goals and targets for establishing and enforcing regulations and standards, uh, of course, in uh, areas that we will be able to encounter, of course, in uh, the quality of water, controlling the release of pollutants, of course, the environment, and managing recycling and other re re reusable uh, waste water. And of course, part of the program of the plans and programs of the government here in, in our country, uh, also working hand in hand with uh, different NGOs, just like the International Human Rights in the Philippines, of course, to strengthen, of course, the advocacy about the better administration and management of the land. Of course, it's very important. And there should be an advanced knowledge in land management and administration. And of course, which is very important is the coastal and marine ecosystem uh, program scaling, uh, which is maybe one of the important things that should be strengthened, just like what we are doing in my work at the Philippine Merchant Mining Academy is to promote the coastal environment protection. And of course, the biodiversity and program for managing solid waste uh, management. So things that we can do to help our, uh, our Mother Earth, of course, we need to think, reduce, reuse, and recycle the amount of waste that we produce, of course. And part of that, we should do a volunteerism in addressing this kind of issue. And of course, by participating in different community uh, cleanups and let us uh, let us educate, of course, uh, our uh, colleagues, our neighborhood about the uh, situations that we're uh, having right now and be uh, wise enough to be aware. As part of the awareness, we need to develop, of course, the thing that we should know about the sustainable development. And part of that is there should be uh, regulations. So that would be all on my part. And thank you once again. And from the Philippines, uh, good evening and mabuhay. That would be all. <laughs> I'm waiting, uh, my moderator, great, uh, great Dr. Frolian. Uh, you gave us- Yes, doctor. Uh, I was like, they blew it out. I, I didn't have words to actually express <laughs> the way that you made everything on point. And, uh, you know, based on your experience, you have grasped all the inches and you have, you have dived everything into detail. Um, 
truly, truly, truly Rona. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you also, ma'am. Okay, yes, yes, I would say uh, you gave us the climate solutions. You say, how can you help to protect the earth? Uh, think reduce, reuse, recycle. Uh, amazing. Uh, and as we said, uh, really brilliant, uh, uh, insightful uh, session. And uh, we always have uh, great uh, speeches by our doctor. Brilliant. So big, big clap for our amazing first speaker of the last day. And yes, now it's the time to call out Charles, sir. Uh, Professor Ch Dr. Charles, sir, it's time for you to grace this occasion by your beautiful words. Thank you very much. I quite appreciate you right from reception. You have been trying. I'm Professor Nada also. I give glory to God for you people. Actually, we are we so to happy to have you, Professor Charles, <laughs> always. Thank you very much. Thank you. We need to appreciate how you, how you have been trying, and God will come to expand our able peace, sir, for his wisdom. And God will come to bless every one of us who work as a team to actualize a dream. And God will bless every one of us accordingly. Actually, the planet needs to be sustained as in sustaining life. Life needs three things in order to survive. What are the three things? Energy, food, nourishment, and liquid water. Climate affects human life between 2030 to 2050. Climate change is expected to cause absolutely 250,000 additional deaths by year as a result of malaria, diarrhea, heat press stress. Many families are living in poverty with less food, less clean water, lower income, working healthy children, immune system are still developing, leaving their rapidly growing bodies more sensitive to diseases and pollution. So let us keep ourselves so that the environment will help us to make our planet more sustainable. There are things we must consider. Thank God for the first speaker. He was able to stress as many of them, but what are those sustainable things? One, think twice before shopping. Two, make sure your big purchases or purchases have big environmental benefits. Three, go plastic free. Four, buy cold products that endanger wildlife. Five, pay attention to labels. Six, be water wise. Be water wise. Seven, drive less. Drive green. Eight, green your homes. Nine, choose white energy. Ten, take extension of your plates. Eleven, Choose to have a smaller family. 12, use your voice and your votes. Stop climate change right now. Protect it. Must start with you, making it more sustainable, as Riley said. It will interest us to know that the, plant, the pandemic may be an intelligent response to climate change. Climate change drives the needs of education for sustainable development and the grooming of new global citizens with sustainable lifestyle. Ex exemplary environmental custodianship. The pandemic ushers in a new normal in which digitalization enforces ways of working and learning. Pandemic enforces education further into technologicalization, which is a development already well underway, faced by commercialization and the reigning market theology or ideology, rather. Before you buy, ask yourself if you really need it. If you do, consider buy gently used instead of new. 
and look for minimal packages and shopping. Learn to reduce, reuse, and recycle. If you are in the market for a new car, look for a foil efficient model. You will save thousands on gas, water, and reduce your carbon footprint over the years. If you are buying a new refrigerator or washer or dryer, look for energy star label to find the most efficient appliances. Use, use reusable bags where you shop instead of plastic. Save our plant to be together in our world. Let us save our environment. As we save our environment, the environment will help us and will be able to sustain that area of sustainability. And God will come to help us. I rest my case. May God come to strengthen us and empower us with his wisdom so that we'll be able to use all these things effectively and efficiently. Thank you very much. I, you, I appreciate you. I appreciate the moderators. I appreciate every speaker that will be coming to speak. May God come to strengthen us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. And your strategy to specifically reduce the carbon footprints, it is interesting. Thank you for letting us know about that. And uh, I have read up your short bio and it was much flattered by it. Thank you Thank so you. much for grace and dedication with your presence. Thank now, you. um, yes, that was great. That was great. Africa, IIU, Africa head. Big, big clap, Professor Charles. I saw you are muted. Yes, it is time for us to call out the next speaker for today's session. That is none other than Esel Palak from Turkey. The Ersin Palak from Turkey is our next speaker. Sir, if you're here, please unmute yourself. We can go on. Uh, here is uh, here is Elnura Dadashova from Azerbaijan. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome. Um, can you see my share screen? Uh, yes, uh, we are. We are honored to have uh, you from the Azerbaijan, and we see what will you present us. The great policy. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting to the second international conference on climate change. Today, I will talk about my country, Azerbaijan's policy on climate change. Um, first, I will introduce a topic, then I will talk about the problems um, on climate change in our country, then international agreements and uh, policies and strategies. Uh, first, I will start with the introduction, climate change. Climate change is one of the global problems worrying the world. Climate changes and their impact on the living world are increasingly worrying the world community. Unstable weather conditions are felt not only in Azerbaijan, but also in several countries of the world and create problems. At the same time, the number of flood events has also increased. And that's the main factor in the increase of all these natural disasters is climate change. Uh, Azerbaijan's climate is highly varied with different areas of the country containing examples of nine of the world's 11 climate zones. And one of the uh, discussed issues in the world uh, in the last 50 years is global warming, climate change, ecological imbalances, environmental pollution, and so on. World experts also note that the reason for this is the large industrial enterprises of developed countries. According to experts, 2 billion people in the world will be deprived of water in 2050, and 3 billion people will lose their water resources in 30 years. Now I would like to talk about the problems on climate change in my country. Today, Azerbaijan's environmental pollution contains all the elements of nature, air, water, and soil. The major share of the increasing air pollution in Azerbaijan accounts for transportation vehicles and industrial facilities. 
Transport vehicles have a major share among the sources of air pollution in big cities, especially the share of Baku is quite high. Baku is the capital of Azerbaijan. Despite the recent measures taken by the government, example, the ban on the cars from other areas entering Baku to reduce the number of cars in the capital, it wasn't possible to achieve desired results. Most of the cars present in Baku traffic are driven within Baku itself, regardless of their registration in other regions. Ganja and Sungaya, they are big cities in Azerbaijan. Uh, they take the following places in the transport-related air pollution. And the rate of transport-related air pollution in big cities is described in the chart, as you see. Then uh, other reasons for soil pollution in Azerbaijan. Uh, the main reasons for soil pollution in Azerbaijan are the oil industry, the excessive use of fertilizers and pesticides, and the wrong application of the irrigation techniques. The water pollution in Azerbaijan can be classified into two groups. Uh, it's one of the problem, water pollution, the third one. The first group includes the pollution of the Caspian Sea, while the second group includes that of the Azerbaijan rivers and lakes. The main sources of pollution of the Caspian Sea are unfiltered industrial products, agricultural wastes, sea and river navigation, land at sea run oil wells, and the pollutants caused by the deepening of the seabed and brought by air and water. Now I would like to talk about the international agreements. The Republic of Azerbaijan joined the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change in 1995 and ratified the Kyoto Protocol of the Convention in 2000. According to the Paris Agreement, the Republic of Azerbaijan has submitted its intended nationally determined contributions to the Secretariat of the Convention and added its contribution to initiatives to mitigate the effects of global climate change. It has set the goal of maintaining, uh, maintaining or a 35% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 compared to the base year 1990. And uh, what about the policies and strategies? Uh, effective environmental policy providing the enterprises with purifies contributions of non-governmental organizations, promotion of environmental awareness and use of the best practice of developed countries can contribute to the solution of the environmental problems. Azerbaijan has also identified an economic development and poverty reduction as the country's priorities, and the country's climate change mitigations and adaptation strategies are reflected in long-term state programs. At the end, I would like uh, one quote by Greta Sandberg. We can't save the world by playing by the rules, but because the rules have to be changed. Everything needs to change, and it has to start today. And at the end, I want to say that we need human change, not climate change. Thank you very much for your attention. And so thank you for this great opportunity to IIU. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. And uh, thank, thank you, first of all, thank you so much for taking me, uh, you know, go to Azerbaijan by your words. Your exceptional man, and your specific uh, strategies and policies by which you know you actually scrutinize everything. That is another level. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great, great Azerbaijan. Great. Now uh, for the next speaker, we have a Nebahed from Turkey. Ma'am, the stage is all yours. Yes. Thank you and. Now I have a presentation. Yes. Oh, the wrong one. Sorry. Sorry. But if I can go on like that. My great. No, as, great. No, sorry. We see it. Great. <laughs> as we are teachers, uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, the importance of climate change education. And here is it, yes. We all come face to face, environmental uh, pollution or global ch uh, climate change in uh, all over the world. And as we are teachers, I decided uh, to talk about how we can educate our students. Because uh, when we uh, surf on the net, we can see or we come across thousands of facts about climate change. And we have 
uh, we come across thousands of articles about it. But I think as teachers, we have a mission. And as we educate our uh, future generation, we can uh, make them uh, environmental literate uh, generations for the future. How can environmental education help to combat climate change? Education is an essential factor uh, in the ever more urgent global fight against climate change. Knowledge regarding to this phenomenon helps young people to understand and tackle the consequences of global warming, encourage them to change their behavior and helps them to adapt to what is already a global emergency. In environmental matters and more particularly in anything related to climate change, UNESCO endorses this view. For UNESCO, education, especially when focused on children and young people, is a key factor in helping to curb climate change. Specifically, it says that education encourages changes in young people's attitudes and behavior and helps them to adapt to climate change related trends. And what's the importance of environmental literacy? for our future generations. In the past few years, various initiatives have been launched to try to curb climate change. Prominent among them are the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, as we call them as SDGs, promoted by the United Nations since 2012. One of them, number 13, is entitled Climate Action. The success of these kinds of initiatives is largely dependent on environment literacy drives among populations that are often strangers to these major political agreements and on the development of a culture of care for the climate. But what exactly do we mean by environmental literacy? Educating citizens, especially children, and raising their awareness regarding the causes and consequences of climate change. How can we bring educational training to schools? As well as including it as a compulsory subject, as far as, uh, as, far as I remember, Italy did it. Uh, there are numerous climate change related activities that can be carried out in schools. For example, uh, activities in nature relating to caring for the environment, such as cleanup operations, planting trees, courses and workshops on recycling, etc. There are also many technological resources, such as EducaClima platform, which I use it frequently, which offer teachers free educational resources related to environment, climate change, responsible consumption, energy and mobility, etc., that they can be put into practice with students in the classroom. For several years, I have been running school SDGs projects. Uh, most of them were eight evening before. Last year, we participated in Goals Project in January, March 2022. During the project, our students both worked on SDG 14 and SDG 13. They have prepared presentations on plastic pollutions in oceans and effects of climate change on environment, as well as brochures for students parents and teachers in our school. We also uh, have some meetings with both students and their parents, and uh, it was a very successful project for us. Yes, it was our, yes. This one was our, uh, the first project. Uh, and in classrooms, we talked about SDGs and their meanings Okay, then uh, in we have also participated in Let's Plant Around the World project coordinated by IIU and planted 50 trees in our schoolyard. Yes, it was our starting point for planting trees in our schoolyard. Yes, these are my students uh, during the activity. Uh, yes, they were very happy and not only students but also our uh, teachers participated in this project. Now, this year, I am going to start a new project on SDG 12, which focuses on responsible consumption 
and project pr production. Uh, I have nearly uh, finished outlining it and uh, Roy, uh, maybe in the first, uh, um, on the first week of October, we will start it. I'm going to focus on three R, reduce, reuse, recycle. Uh, in 2015, almost uh, 12 tons of resources were extracted per person with electronic waste as the fastest growing sector. This means that production, consumption, and natural resources must be managed better and differently. The worst ecological footprint should be reduced by changing the way goods and resources are produced and consumed. I believe that we can empower future generations by educating them as environmentally literate and raising their awareness on climate change. By implementing these projects, I believe that we can manage these goals. And our my motto is future is our hand, is in our hands. Yes, this is my photo. And thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mama. I was very happy to hear that you were working for the SDGs and your students were even working for the few goals of SDGs. And, you know, people like this have been growing rare. And hearing you all do this sort of uh, SDG related works, it's simply great. Um, more, more power to us, more power to our nature so that we can conserve it at its best. Thank you so much. We are a drop in an ocean. And we, uh, if we uh, implement uh, projects, it, it shouldn't, uh, for example, in my country, we have to take uh, a lot of permissions uh, for local projects. But uh, if we start implementing them just in our schools globally, every teacher, maybe we can manage to um, create a better future for our new generations. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly Let's correct. See Thank a you big so much for your view as well. We have the so, power. Don't forget it. As teachers, we have the power to change our uh, future for a better planet to live in. Maybe uh, we can help uh, our students and empower them uh, in that way. I believe it. I, I believe in myself. Uh, and we can all believe in ourselves. Okay, thank you for listening to me. Thank great. you so much. Big clap for our great neighborhood. She is doing an, a great uh, work on the global level for her, Azerbaijan. She's an amazing teacher. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. And keep doing great work. Do it. I will go. <laughs> yes. Yes. As for the uh, next speaker after this powerful presentation, we have Mian Jamaluddin Prasada from Pakistan. We have an, a great, amazing uh, scholar, teacher, Yamal Prasada from Pakistan. Welcome. He's so active. He likes research. He likes SDG. He's doing a lot in this field in his country. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, or good night, a different part of the world. I'm Jamal Pirzada from Pakistan. So uh, it is a wonderful, remarkable platform. I have listened from Azerbaijan, Turkey, Philippines, and Africa. So right now I'm from South Asia, Pakistan. So today I want to discuss about the effect of global warming and the future outcomes. So it is a debatable and hard issue right now. We are facing acute, difficult, and terrible problem due to the climate change. And these type of the problem faces since last couple of decades. So first of all, I want to introduce that the, uh, about the greenhouses. And greenhouses is con uh, consist on the water vapor, methane and nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide. These type of the gases are directly affect in our environment atmosphere. And there, because of these uh, gases, we are suffering right now. 
and then the effect of greenhouses gases. So greenhouses gases effect, which is very dangerously. So some energy is reflected back to the spaces and solar energy from the sun process through the atmosphere. And then the earth's surface is hotted by the sun and the radiation, the heat back out towards the space. And then the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere trap some of the heat. And that particular heat directly affect humanity and human being and wildlife and the whole environment and atmosphere. So right now I am uh, focusing on what is global warming and what is climate change. These both are different type of the terminologies or terms. First of all, global warming, global warming effect on a long-term basis. And that particular effect directly affect humanity and overall the atmosphere, but it take a time and long lasting process. But the global climate change is rapidly affect our atmosphere environment through the different type of the activities such as you can say the fossil fuels from carbon emissions and the industrial process. And you can say that the natural disaster in the shape of earthquake, in the shape of heavy rainfall, in the shape of volcano erupted and the tectonic plates movement, these all the changes occurs rapidly and drastically. And basically the climate change effect by two major uh, reasons, two major components are involved in climate change. First of all, the natural process. In the natural process, all these things are involved through the naturally and directly affected the human beings. It is called the natural process. And there are some examples such as volcano. Volcano release the gases and particles in our environment and atmosphere and they suffered humanity. Last uh, few years, we observed that the, specifically the Tango, the uh, volcano erupt and blast and what happened, we know that the humanity suffer from the particle and gases and these type of the volcanoes are still in process and still in uh, uh, burning mood. So the second thing is the tectonic plates and the tectonic plates also create a problem geographically, economically, or environmental. So the tectonic plate movement changing rapidly and the changing of these plates, we know that they create the earthquake and the sudden movements of the earth and then the, each and everything is changed either through sea level, either are uh, geographical or regional disaster. Then we go through the change in the sun. The sun, we know that the sun produces heat and energy and that particular energy give us a chance to live in our planet. And that suddenly changing and rapidly changing our abnormality in temperature cause a big problem for human being and all the planet specifically in sudden change in temperature reduction or increase in temperature, these both factor directly affect the human being. And these type of activities also suffer the human, human being or humanity. And then the shift earth orbits. Yes, we know that the earth orbits play a wider role to create a different type of the season and atmosphere in our planet. So winter, autumn, spring, and summer. These all four seasons exist in our planet because of the Earth of the of orbit shift. And that particular shift properly give us a four type of different season and four type of different crops in our agriculture sectors. But if the orbits shift opposite direction, then what will be happen? And if orbits shift slowly and not process according to uh, uh, proper in a natural process. So what will be happen? It creates a lot of problem, especially in environmental sector, agriculture sector, socio-economical sector, or we can say it is a big threat for the human being. And then most important factor after natural uh, process or natural 
activities, we go through the human activities. And yes, human activities also play a vital role to make our greenhouse gases in our environment. Uh, the human activities create greenhouse gases in our atmosphere through the fuel, fossil, uh, fuel, fossil burnings and fuel burnings or carbon emissions and the different type of the gases through the industrial process. These things are dangerous for the humanity. And we believe that if these things are not stabilized right now, then they create a huge impact in our human being survival or humanity survival and that's why we need a renewable energy corporate social responsibility and practices and policies and we also focus on waste management the technology and the safest technology for human being and lots of different ideas which are in our society so we desperately focus on these things right now and now i i i i believe that if we stabilize these things it is better for our next generation and next couple of thousand or hundred years for the human being so now i uh, want to uh, 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 focus on possible future outcomes what will be happen if these things are not uh, reduce or stop or stabilize right now so number one the warming and sea level rise will continue and will probably occur more quickly than than what we have already seen yes we know that the warmings uh, global warmings increase sea level Art, uh, arctic uh, Arctics and Antarctica and these type of the, uh, different glaciers melting with the passage of time and these melting rapidly. And because of the melting of glaciers, icebergs and ice uh, mountains. So we observe that the sea level increased slowly and gradually. We observe that the Netherlands also suffering from that particular problem. Bangladesh, Maldives, and these type of the countries, Indonesia, these type of the countries facing the problem, specifically the increase in sea level. Last couple of years, lots of research focus on that particular problem, but unfortunately, we didn't get a desired result, but I hope that they will, must take an initiative about it. And then the greenhouse cases. If we control greenhouse cases and stabilize the whole process, this will probably continue to occur for the centuries because that is a long lasting process. If we control right now, but the impact will be happen in next few decades, in new next few centuries. So it is a long lasting process. And I think that if it is a right time to take a uh, 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 take a uh, decision to control these type of the activities in our planet. And then some effects may be permanent, such as the shape of melting the glaciers and the icebergs and the droughts, the fillers and the heavy rainfalls, earthquakes, these all things may be permanent basis we, uh, we face on regular basis. So if we not control these things, these things will be happen, especially climatical change or climate hit drastically impact on our socio-economical culture, our, our development and our infrastructure in the shape of health, and education, and etc. Yamal, Yamal, come to the and, and, and one last thing I want to share with you. Yes, and one last thing I want to share with you in our country condition right now. I want to share with you know, some clips, uh, some pictures with you. So what happened in my country, specifically we in my state, you. Sindh we and see Bristol. only you. Yes, you can see. Yes, it is visible. No, it is not yet. Now, yes. Yes, it is visible right now. Yes. Yes. So this is a uh, current situation in our country. So what happened if we can't control the climate change? And these things happen not in our country, but rest of the world. It is a big concern. 
you can see the village area after a heavy monsoon rain district char the pakhtun of pakistan province and the that particular things are happen and uh, also i want to share with you yamal yes yes please go you can listen yes so so in the end i must say that that it is a decision for the rest of all the world and through the panel of united nation and rest of the other bodies to be controlled and efficient way and i hope that uh, this is a short span of time i i try to contribute my efforts but i hope that uh, this is a big concern for the rest of the world and it is all about my presentation thank you uh, thank you thank yes you. yes thank you thank you why are you thank you yamal you can talk till tomorrow we feel we will have a lot of sessions more you can apply for your training session and talk 60 minutes so thank you yes uh, thank you so much sir. yes and for next we have uh, professor dr siham al kathafi from new zealand she was yesterday as well, and today we are very honored to have you now. Hi, son. Please go further. Go to the next. We have our Dr. Mansoor Shah here from Pakistan. Dr. Mansoor, are you here? Please. He's here. But... I think he's not here as well. Then I think we can go with uh, Shailja Vasudeva. Very warm good evening from India. I'm Dr. Shailja Vasudeva, Associate Professor in Department of Political Science from Government College, Palampur, Excuse and an active I'm lifetime I'm member of... Uh, you're not visible? It would be great. Yeah, great. Ready to go. Ma'am, maybe uh, I'm facing network issue. My video is on. I don't know why I'm not visible. Uh, Dr. Shaila, we see you on in the minute and then you disap disappear. We then you, we don't see you. Now, yes. Maybe now, now not maybe I'm facing uh network issue ma'am maybe uh, now i'm visible now when you say i'm visible then you oh. okay. Okay. okay okay i'm changing my network to airtel to bsnl just a minute now i'm visible ma'am yes i'm visible now Yes, okay. yes. Hang on. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm Dr. Shelja Vasudeva from India, and I'm Associate Professor, Department of Political Science from Shaheed Captain Vikram Batra, Government Degree College, Palampur. And I'm active member of and lifetime member of the Kamarin Trust. And I would like to thank uh, my dear friend Nada, ma'am. Uh, to inviting me for this conference just an, uh, one and a half hour ago, uh, I, um, I uh, got invitation for this conference. So um, I prepare a short topic on what is climate change and its impact on society, followed by some suggestions. It's a small presentation. Uh, so uh, firstly, we go, uh, what is climate change? Climate change is a long-term shift in temporary uh, global or regional climate patterns. These shifts may be uh, temporary, but since, uh, since the 18th, 1800th century, human activities have been the main driver of climate change, primarily due to the burning of fossils, fuels like uh, coal, oil, and gas, which produce heat uh, trapping 
uh, it's all our climate change reason. The impacts of climate change on different sectors of society on, uh, are interrelated. Drought can harm food production and human health. Flooding can lead to disease spread and damages to ecosystem and infrastructure. Human health issues can increase uh, mortality, impact food availability and limit worker productivity. Climate change impacts are seen throughout every aspect of the world we live in. However, climate change impacts are uneven across the country and the world. Even within a single community, climate change impacts can differ between neighborhoods or individuals. Long-lasting long uh, socio-economic uh, inequities can make undeserved groups who often have the highest exposure to hazard and the fewest resource to respond more vulnerable. I have few suggestions. Uh, I have given only suggestion three R formula. It's a reduce, reuse and recycle. Uh, we can uh, save our climate only if we use this kind of uh, formulas like three R formulas. So my suggestion is three R formula, reduce, reuse and recycle. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vasudeva. Thank you for your presentation, for your speech. Uh, A powerful presentation indeed. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, yeah, as for the uh, next question, we have Dr. Sauvik Gangli. Sir, over to you. Dr. Sauvik Gangli. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. he's Am I, here. I'm, yeah. Uh, Good evening, but he's a ghost, Doctor Solik. You are a ghost. <laughs> Move that background again, please. Let me see. Please, <laughs> better to not see. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, good morning. Good evening, and good afternoon to all the <laughs> viewers. Uh, we, we are uh, going to discuss about something related to global warming. And since I'm from a technical side, uh, I'll highlight upon the usage of uh, air conditioners and the refrigerator system uh, or similar sort of devices that we are occupied with these days. In our household appliances, uh, uh, especially in our tropical countries like India, we are uh, facing this particular problem of having our uh, air conditioners being uh, turned on for almost uh, uh, five to eight hours in the night and almost during day hours as well in our offices too. So uh, for this, uh, uh, we should think that how we can uh, uh, improvise upon because uh, all the time we are having uh, a judicious use of uh, these air conditioners must be there in order that uh, we should uh, have not only cut in the electricity bill, but also uh, uh, it should serve our uh, purpose uh, of uh, saving our climate or uh, prevent our uh, environment from global warming as well. So uh, when we uh, look into the air conditioners or when we are, uh, we cannot uh, uh, stop uh, the ACs, uh, we, we cannot turn it off or all of a sudden at the night time or during the day hours when it's very hot and humid, especially at this time of this year, when we are facing uh, these type of uh, climatic changes or these type of global warming, it has uh, the temperature is uh, going uh, close to 40s. So uh, it's high time that we must think of a technology or some technological aspects. So our uh, companies are also coming up with such design such uh, manufacturing uh, things that we often take care of. Say, for example, the first thing that we need to emphasize upon where we, we have some star rating for these uh, refrigerator system or for these air conditioner systems. Uh, these star ratings are usually for the energy saving that they provide us. 
So it is preferable that we go in for the energy saving with a, a higher star rating being assigned by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. So uh, it's better that we, we try to uh, make a judicious use of our air conditioners in our household uh, as well as in our offices too. When it's not required, better to put it off. But at the same time, we also from the technical aspect, we must also improvise upon the design so that uh, there is less emission of the chlorofluorocarbons and uh, giving rise to more energy saving. That's why we, we should be judicious also to buy uh, when, when we are buying this uh, uh, appliances, we should be careful enough to uh, uh, buy such certain appliances, uh, which, which will cause more energy saving. Uh, not only to cut down uh, your electricity bill, but to provide uh, or give your environment uh, some, some relief uh, or uh, your climate to get certain relief. So uh, especially uh, uh, we in uh, tropical countries like India or Pakistan or the neighboring countries that we have, we have a very extreme summer. And uh, from the place where I'm in, it's almost close to 40, 45 degrees uh, during the summertime. So uh, it's very hot. We cannot uh, sustain without uh, having our air conditioners. But uh, obviously, we must make it a point that when we are uh, thinking from the technical aspect, uh, we must go in for certain air conditioners which would have more energy saving. So uh, it, it is our responsibility also. It's our moral responsibility also to invite in our uh, students or uh, the budding engineers, we should say, uh, to uh, map up the things in such a way that when they go or join an industry or they are into jobs in a similar sort of industry, they must uh, go ahead with some uh, good design or energy saving aspects. They must look into and they must work upon it, on it so that we are benefited, our society is benefited. That's all from my side. Over to you, moderator. Thank you so much. Much appreciated, sir. Thank you so much. And as for the uh, next speaker for today's session, we have Gloria Mariana Marquez Portillo from Mexico. Ma'am, the stage is all yours. Welcome. Welcome there, Gloria. Thank you, everybody. Can you see yes. my screen? Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, it, it is not a full screen if you, you can put. If not, it is not a problem. Okay. Mm. It's okay? Great, great. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, good morning, good night, good evening to everybody in, in the world. Um, and I'm very... Uh, Exciting. <laughs> I'm sorry, my English is not very well, but I try to, to do the best. <laughs> okay, well, uh, the pollution consists in the process in introduction of physical, chemical, and biological uh, material that negatively affects the environment. Plastic plays a fundamental role in the environment pollution, its dispersion, and its slow degradation process. This material trains in the health of the ecosystems. From from this means this problems goes increasing. An example, for example, the polystyrene and the polyethylene. Well, um, it's estimated that 8.3 tons in, of plastic is in the uh, maybe in the 2050 year, and maybe we had more plastic than fish in the ocean. Well, um, it's very important because uh, this problem, uh, for example. In if we try to um, have a difference between the USA and Denmark, for example, uh, one person in, in Denmark had four bags by year. And in the United States, one person had a plastic bag for per day. So this is a very important problem. Uh, well, but what is polystyrene? Polystyrene generates massive volumes of the non-recyclable waste. Therefore, its elimination consists in, in incineration, 
but the materials in this process uh, realize matin uh, chlorofluorocarbons, uh, which favor uh, the greenhouse effect and match the ozone layer. Human health is all also fed because uh, they realize dioxin, talax, benzene, and bisphenol A. Uh, these products are carcinogenic uh, substance and may um, cancer disease. For example, uh, the polyethylene, despite having very favorable characteristics for production and use, the low density polyethylene is very uh, easy to, uh, to obtain and is very complicated to eliminate in the environments because they uh, resist also uh, 150 years or 500 years, uh, 100 years in, in the environment and the ecosystems. So uh, we need to try to uh, recycle uh, and for example, in the world, the only 5% is recycled of the plastic and the 12% is incinerated and the 79 is accumulated in the natural environment. So, uh, but what happened in the world? In the world, uh, for example, in North America, uh, we had uh, the 9% in the plastic is recycled by the United States and in the Europe, only the 30%. And uh, for example, in other countries like China, 25% uh, is, pl is plastic recycled. Also problem in the world is the microplastic because we uh, detect uh, microplastic in the blood. So this is very important to understand this problematic. Uh, despite all the campaigns of the reduce to the use plastic uh, had a very, very, um, complicated situation by the COVID uh, disease because the gloves, masks, and the uh, surgical uh, equipment was increased by this, this pandemic process. So um, we tried to use the, the four R's, uh, refuse, reduce, uh, reuse, and recycle. For example, uh, we, we need to to do to do not use plastic where it's very alternative. Uh, only use plastic when strictly is very necessary. Uh, for example, uh, how uh, to uh, try to uh, to reuse these plastics one and one more, and to collect plastic waste to make and for reprocess reprocessing is easier. Um, also, we can we can see um, a list with um, strategies for reduced plastic, for example, reuse soul max and water bottles, bring your out uh, bus while shopping, and use glass or bamboo, for example, is an alternative, um, buy cartoons or glasses when it's possible. Uh, also, make your own products, uh, for example, in the uh, uh, gold, uh, 20 and 11 goals in the o, uh, OSD um, try to uh, use products uh, recyclable or make for you. Buy less packet foods and, for example, wish the glass food containers. Okay, in the 13, 13 um, clim uh, climate action. Uh, is very uh, interesting change in the now impact in every continent because which can be seen the changing weather patterns, rising sea levels and the strain weather events. The most vulnerable uh, populations are being affected the most. This global uh, change requires urgent coordinated action for individuals, companies, and the governments around the world. Um, thank you. This is all. Bravo. Great. You say no English. Excellent English. Excellent solutions. I really Great. like it. Bravo. You know, up till now, uh, we have only heard about uh, three R's, that is uh, recycle, reuse, and, uh, you know, reduce. Now you have introduced the another R that is, uh, you know, uh, refuse. So that's the great initiative to actually include that. Um, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation this time.
And the last for the next presenter, today we have a Mabelie Victoriano from Philippines. Now the Philippines is going to get the stage. Share. Yes, welcome, welcome, beautiful Mabelie. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good morning to other country. I am maybe El Victoriano from the Philippines. Yes, so, uh, actually, I have been uh, uh, joining uh, in different programs of IIU, and I'm glad I'm I'm here again to be with you and to see uh, the beautiful uh, faces of other teachers here and the, our handsome teachers. Okay, so once again, I am maybe El Victoriano, high, high school English teacher from the Philippines. And my topic for this evening is about cause and effect of climate change. Okay, first we have to uh, define what is a climate change. Climate change refers to long-term shift in temperatures and weather pat patterns. These shifts may be natural, such as through variations that solar cycles. Since the 1980s, human activities had been the main driver of climate change, primarily due to the burning fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas. Causes of climate change. As greenhouse gas emissions dunked into the earth, we trap the sun's heat. This leads to global warming and climate change. The world is now warming faster than at any point in recorded history. Like here in the Philippines, we uh, always suffer from a uh, very hot temperature because of high degrees temperature. Generating electricity and heat by burning fossil oils, such as coal, oil, and natural gas causes a large chunk of global emissions. Most electricity is still reduced from fossil fuels. Only about a quarter comes from wind, solar, and other renewable sources. Manufacturing and industry produce emissions, mostly from burning fossils, fuels to produce energy for making things like cement, iron, steel, electronics, plastics, clothes, and other goods. Mining and other industrial processes also release gases. One, cutting down forests to create farms or past pastures or for other reasons causes emissions since trees, when they are cut, release the carbon they have been storing. Since forests absorb carbon dioxide, destroying them also limits nature's ability to keep emissions out of the atmosphere. Okay, causes of climate change. We have here anthropogenic chemical fertilizers, deforestation, increased vehicles, emissions of GHG, industries, emissions of carbon dioxide. Okay, the natural causes of climate change are sunspot and solar cycle, ocean currents, forest fires, volcanic eruptions, meteorites, and emissions from animals. Okay, climate change, some effects of climate change are rising sea levels, economic losses, rise temperature, more and worse droughts, more heat related illnesses, more and worse storms, more animal extinctions, more and worse forest fires. Nearly all land areas are seeing more hot days and heat waves. 2020 was one of the hottest year on record. Higher temperatures increase heat related illnesses and can make it more difficult to work and move around. While fires start more easily and spread more rapidly when the conditions are hotter. Human beings rapid rise in heat gain due to exposure to hotter than the conditions comprises the body abilities to regulate temperature and can result in a cascade of illnesses, including heat, rhyme, exhaustion, heat stroke, and hyperthermia. Plants and animals, okay, are also uh, Better because of this climate change. Climate change also alters the life cycles of plants and animals. For example, as temperatures get warmer, many plants are destroyed, grow and bloom earlier in the spring and survive longer. Okay, 
Changes in temperature can ca cause changes in rainfall. This results in more severe and frequent storms because flooding and landslides destroying homes and communities and causing billions of plants. Okay, like what had happened uh, a month ago here in the Philippines, there was a magnitude 7 earthquake and destroyed a lot of houses, especially uh, our uh, tourist path in a uh, vegan. Okay, some historical places destroyed and some historical houses were destroyed because of this uh, magnitude 7 earthquakes. Water is becoming... So, droughts can steer destructive sand and dust from that can move billions of tons of sand across continents. Resources are expanding, reducing land for growing food. Many people now face the threat of not having enough water on a regular basis. Drought can also cause long-term public problems, including, including short shortages of drinking water and poor quality drinking water, impacts on air quality, sanitation, and hygiene, and food and nutrition. More disease such as Nile virus carried by mosquitoes breeding in stagnant water. Drought also affects the environment in many different ways. Plants and animals depend on water, just like when a drought occurs, their food supply can shrink. Their habitat can be damaged. Sometimes the damage temporary, temporary and their habitat and food supply return to normal when the drought is over. Okay, so what, uh, what do we need to do in order to prevent a climate change? Five main ste steps that society needs to take to defeat climate change. First, commitment. The current climate crisis requires people to demand political action from their government. So our government uh, must need to have a project uh, for us to uh, eliminate this climate change. Next, healthy habits, walking, riding a bike, and healthy eating are habits that will help in the fight against climate change. Next, environment. We should be involved in uh, environmental projects like uh, what uh, the IU had, uh, planting of trees, um, preventing of illegal loggings, uh, and then uh, preventing of mining in our uh, mountains. Next, efficiency and innovations. Climate change needs people to prioritize energy saving and the use of renewable energy. Okay, that is all for today. Thank you for sparing your time to listen in my discussion. And I am so very glad that I am a part of this IIU program. Once again, thank you and good evening. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so, so much. We were like, your detailed like, description about how to, you know, inbuilt everything. You, you are amazing. Thank you, thank you so much for this uh, beautiful presentation. And as for the next presenter, we have Akbar Hilmi Ahmed Reza from uh, Indonesia. Akbar, sir, the stage is all yours. Hello, everyone. I'm Akbar Hilmi Ahmed Reza. I'm from Indonesia. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night. In my, I'm going to give my speech but it's not going to be not going to be so detailed it's going to be focused on human contribution to global climate change well as as we know what is a climate change climate change refers to long term shift in temperature and weather patterns this change could be a natural cause due to solar cycle but it can also be caused by human intervention so Human contribution to global climate change. I decided to uh, divide this human contribution into two separate kinds. One is a positive contribution, is a human contribution that will help to prevent global climate change. The other one is negative human contribution, is the one that will worsen the current condition of the earth and a contribution that will exacerbate the impact of climate change. Humans, uh, first we're gonna talk about the humans' negative contributions. We have Deforestation Act. Deforestation Act is a purposeful clearing of, de uh, of forested land. Direct causes of deforestation are agricultural expansion, uh, 
wood extraction for fuel and uh, stuff, infrastructural expansion such as road building and urbanization. There is also transportation emissions, one of the most uh, significant impact on climate change. Land and sea transportation are one of the largest contributor to greenhouse gas emission, or you could say GHG. And then the last, there is pollu a trash pollution. As we know, currently the use of plastic is very frequent and environmental pollution due to plastic is also unavoidable. When plastic breaks down slowly and becomes microplastic, it will release harmful substances such as methane and ethylene. After that, we, we're gonna move on to humans' positive contribution. As time goes by, we human will observe our surrounding vicinity. We are starting to realize that the danger of climate change is real. Various efforts such as campaign and research uh, as an effort to preserve the environment began to be promoted in various regions of the world. Reforestation and waste recycling as the result of observation have already begun to be practiced among the community around the world. Following that, the result of observation, humans also innovate stuff, such as uh, environmentally friendly energy sources. You could say solar, solar power, and then there is wind power and hydropower, and there is also nuclear power. That is one of the example of human innovation to prevent uh, global climate change. And then we as humans also have government. Government could regulate laws and enforce them to people so that there is no activities that would worsen the current situation of the earth. Government is the one who have the resources and the perfect tool to be deployed in solving climate change problems. And also international cooperation between countries will also be very helpful in finding a way of solving global climate change. In conclusion, we as humans are the creatures of God who are given intelligence. We play an important role in preserving nature as it should be. By utilizing intelligence of our minds, we can preserve our beloved earth and produce a sustainable positive impact for, humer for humanity and future generations. I think that's all from me. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's just that. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, we are so proud of you. Uh, you are an amazing student. You really uh, gave us uh, so many solutions. Uh, Thank you. Yes. He did Thank a you. wonderful job in doing that as well. And uh, yeah, we are very elated to have you, sir. So for the next uh, speaker today, we will be having one more sign from India. Mohammed Hussain, the stage is all yours. We have uh, Mohammed Hussain right here. Um, we don't, don't think we so. don't hear yeah. you. Hello, all of the team members. Now, yes, great. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I am very thankful to you for giving me a chance to share something about climate change and NTR. First of all, I want to give some introduction regarding the climate change in India. I have written some important points regarding this, which I want to share with you. India is facing 
with the challenge of sustaining its rapid economic growth while dealing with the global threat of climate, climate change. This threat emanates from accumulated greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere. Such gases are generated through long-term and intense industrial growth and high consumption lifestyles in developed countries. Climate change may alter the distribution and quality of India's natural resource and adversely affect the livelihood of its people. Within, with an economy closely tied to its natural resource base and climate sensitive sectors such as agriculture, water and forestry, India may face a major threat because of the projected changes in climate. Recognizing that climate change is a global challenge, India and world has engaged actually in multilateral negotiations in the UN framework. Convention on Climate Change. India's objective has been to establish an effective, effective, cooperative, and equitable global approach based on the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities enshrined in the United Nations framework. Convention on Climate Change, UNFCC. Impact of climate change and world as well as in India. Some important points like as widespread displacement and extension of animal population due to habitat loss will add more species to the threatened and extent list. Number two, thermal expansion also contribute, contributes to sea level rise. Number three, there is evidence that some Himalayan glaciers have retreated since the 19th century as well. Number five, spread of diseases like malaria, et cetera, in tropics will put more pressure on the health care sector as well. Sacristy of fresh water during droughts and contamination of fresh water supplies during floods, compromise hygiene, thus increasing rates, disease like cholera, diarrhea, etc. One of the main important points, like as biodiversity loss. Rising temperatures will further affect the physical, chemical, and biological properties of freshwater lakes and rivers, with reverse impacts on many individual freshwater species. Uh, we don't hear you, please. You are muted. Uh, we, can't, we can't see him either. Yes. Yeah, he's there. He's there. Right. Sir, you have the stage. Please start uh, sharing. Popular seas lying on the coast will be submerged under the sea. A reduced food security. Climate change affects crops by Im impacting irrigation, isolation, as well as the prevalence of pests. Moderate warming increase of one to th three degrees Celsius in mean temperature is expected to benefit crop yields in temperature regions, while in low, lower latitudes, the crop will take a hit. One main important point is also. The import, the amount of arable land in high altitude region is likely to increase by reduction of the amount of frozen lands. Changing, changing rainfall patterns is also one of the uh, points which is includes an impact of climate change in India. A decline in monsoon rainfall since the 1950s has already been observed, the frequency of heavy rainfall events have also been increased. A two degree Celsius rise in the world's average temperatures will make India's summer monsoon highly unpredictable at four degrees Celsius warming an extremely wet monsoon that currently has a chance of occurring only once in 100 years 
is projected to occur every 10 years by the end of the century. Improvements in hydro meteorological systems for weather forecasting and the installation of food warming systems can help people move out of harm space before a weather related disaster strikes. One of the main points is also agriculture and food security. In this, you have in this point, uh, is rice, while overall rice yields have increased, rising temperatures with lower rainfall at the end of the growing season have caused a significant loss in India's rice production. Without climate change, average rice yields would have been almost 6% higher. In wheat, extremely high temperatures in northern India, above 34 degrees Celsius have had a substantial negative effect on wheat yields and rising temperatures can only aggravate the situation. Energy security is also one of the main points in global and its impacts. Climate-related impacts on water resources can undermine the two dominant forms of power generation in India and world as well. Hydropower and thermal power generation, both of which depends on advocate water supplies to function effectively, to function at fully efficiency. Thermal power plants need a constant supply of fresh cool water to maintain their cooling systems as well. Dr. Hussain, Dr. Hussain, please, uh, the time, uh, can you come to the conclusion, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Med yeah, meditation and adaptation. Meditation refers to actions taken to lower the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and thereby reduce the extent to which the global system changes. Meditation involves. Madam, this is the last point, points, uh, which I want to share with you. Reducing or eliminating emissions at the source, example, for example, building a wind farm instead of coal fire power plant, avoiding deforestation, creating more energy efficient, energy neutral, or even energy producing buildings, appliances, vehicles, etc. Sequestering greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere through planting more trees that absorb carbon dioxide, carbon capture and storage facilities at factories, factories and power plants, stimulating additional sequestration into the ocean via plankton growth, etc. Last point, adaptation. In the field of climate change, refers to actions taken that reduce the negative consequences of changes in the climate, example, switching to drought-resistant crops, creating protein in a coastal buffer zone, developing an effective early warming system, building flood barriers, expansion, extending insurance, etc. as well. These are the some important points which I had to discuss with you. So I am very thankful to you to have given me some more time in this to share with this information with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. And be sure we will give you more time next time. Be free. Contact us and join us in session. And we will really be honored because uh, you have an amazing uh, conclusion. You, you put the main things. Uh, so uh, uh, great uh, listening. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you sir. Thank you so much. It was a power packed presentation, I must say. It was detailed and inbuilt, it had everything. And for the next keynote speaker of today's session, we have uh, Idioma Esther from Nigeria. Ma'am Idioma, you have the stage. Okay, thank you so much, International Internship University, for having me. I really appreciate the entire team, Professor Nada and all the moderators. Thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. My we name is- We like to Diana. see a beautiful lady. We also like to see you and have you. Thank you. My name is Ijoma Estan Namdi. I am from Nigeria. And today I will be discussing 
the topic climate change education, how to create awareness about climate change. Climate change, as we all know, refers to long-term shift in temperature and weather patterns. And this could be either natural or man-made, but we are not going into all of that today. Now, how do we spread this message? Because a lot of people don't even know what climate change is all about. Some people haven't heard this message before. There are a lot of people that have zero idea of the kind of hazardous effects climate change crisis is causing in our society today. So how do we take this message home, both to people who are elite, but they've not heard about it, and people at the grassroots level? Because we need everybody to get involved in combating this climate change crisis. If nothing is done about it, it will get worse over the years. So what are the ways we can create awareness about climate change crisis in our community? Number one, through the use of social media. We all know everybody gets information online. The, the world has turned to a global village. So we need to take this message to our social media platforms. We can even go as far as creating a 30 seconds video, 40 seconds video, just a short video clip where people can watch and get to understand what climate change is all about. Because some people may not have that patience to read scientific law um, articles. They may not have the luxury of time to read lengthy articles of climate change. So if we can use video clips to pass this message along, it will go a long way. We can also use our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, any other Facebook, any other social media platform you have to spread this message so that people will get to understand. Number two, we can create at work. We can use art to spread this message. It could be painting, it could be sculptures, photographs, collages, whatever just you know people get inspired by art and people get happy people are happy whenever they come across an artwork so we can make use of artwork to pass this message to the grassroots level another thing we need to do is radio presentation i am from nigeria and we have over 200 million people in nigeria now as of 2021 about 108 million people have been declared active social media users. And the rest, which is 92 million, don't even have access to social media. So how can we get this message to the grassroots, people who are not on social media? That means we need to make use of radio presentation. When we do this using our native languages, like in Nigeria, we have three major languages, which is Igbo, Hausa, and Yoruba. If we can make use of our native languages to drive this message home so that the natives, the locals can understand what climate change is all about, because we need to carry everyone along. Nobody should be left behind in this message. Now, the thought is using the educated locals who will go from neighborhood to neighborhood to spread this message along. They can also achieve this through community events. Events could be organized in different communities through different sponsorship by politicians or the government so that this message could be passed along because we need everybody to understand how global change crisis is causing a lot of pandemonium in our planet today. And we need to also teach them things they can do so they can combat these changes. Another thing we need to do, which is the fifth point, is to include climate change in our school curriculum. Yes, right from childhood, if we can start teaching children what climate change is all about, how they can recycle plastics, the 
things they could they can do to combat climate change crisis it will go a long way you can imagine a boy of or a girl of six years old with a great idea about climate change and this has been taught right from cradle till adulthood it will go a long way to provide solution because we need the posterity of this country the posterity of the whole world to know what climate change is all about it will affect how they can combat it because there is this saying that a youth today is a leader tomorrow so if our youth today can know what climate change is all about and they grow to seek solution and also implement what they've learned over the years it will go a long way to help us combat this crisis so as global educators change makers scientists lecturers professors you know we all are functioning in different capacity i need us to go take this message to the grassroots we need to tell everyone around us like in the course of preparing for this topic i even had to go a long way to educate my family on what climate change is all about in the course of preparing for this topic and you can imagine a lot of i was amazed that they didn't even understand the kind of damage we are having as a result of this climate change and it was so insightful and enlightening so i need us to take this message it shouldn't just end here you know in this conference we should take this message to the grassroots so that everybody will be carried along that is the only way we can stop climate change denial and combat this crisis thank you very much once again for giving me this ample opportunity to talk about climate change crisis and to also tell us how we can combat this and how we can create awareness in our community. Thank you very much. Big, big, big clap for a great woman, strong woman with the words empowering us here all today. Thank you, Ejeoma, very, very much. Great Nigeria. Professor Charles, do you see how amazing woman do you have Charlie, in your country? Yeah, she's trying over here. <laughs> That's a good one, Ijoma. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, from Nigeria, uh, we are moving to the Philippines. Philippines. Yes. Great. So let me just welcome uh, Marina Hedge-Veldiva from Philippines for the next presentation. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon to others. Maybe good morning to other countries. This is my first time to be invited in this kind of uh, kind of uh, talk <laughs> when it comes to environment, and, and it's it my will not be the last time. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Tonight, I want to talk about the human contribution to global climate change. What are the things that we contribute in order for us to have this climate change, which is the very big problem that we are facing right now? According to Stephen Hawking, the polar ice cap are shrinking and the desert areas are increasing. At night, the earth is no longer dark, but large areas are lit up. All of this is evidence that human exploitation of the planet is reaching a critical limit. This is so true with us. So our planet is really reaching a critical limit. So we have to be aware of it. We need to educate ourselves, educate other people in order for us to know what we can do in order to have a sustainable planet. 
Human activities contribute to climate change by causing changes in Earth's atmosphere in the amounts of greenhouse gases, aerosols, and cloudiness. As you can see in the picture, it's like a, a devastating truth that there's a lot of trash in the oceans, a lot of pollutants in our environment. So we need to be awake of this scenario. So human activities results in emission of four principal greenhouse gases. So what are those uh, four principal greenhouse gases? So they are the first is carbon dioxide, the methane, the halocarbons, and nitrous oxide. And how do human activities contribute to climate change and how do they compare with natural influences? The largest known contribution comes from burning of fossil fuels, which releases carbon dioxide gas to the atmosphere. Greenhouse gases and aerosols affect climate by altering incoming solar radiation and outgoing infrared radiation that is part of Earth energy balance. Imagine that. If our Earth will not be balanced, what will happen to us? So it's really alarming. It's the world really need us to educate people, not just here in my country, not just here in the Philippines, but it is a problem of everyone. So we really need to hit the call. We really need to partake. We really need to encourage people to do their part in combating the climate change. What is happening right now? So this is the sad truth. We have the air pollution. This is not, uh, this is true in every country. We are experiencing air pollution. And the next is water pollution. Water pollution is really uh, a devastating part when it comes to climate change. According to some research, it's like we have this kind of global garbage patch, which is in the ocean. And it is just like 600 miles bigger, which is very big amount of trash, which is somehow polluting our planet. The next is overpopulation. Because of overpopulation, there is deforestation. We need to cut down trees. That's why there's a lot of floods and we are experiencing many damages. And when it comes to destruction of marine ecosystem, it's really because of plastic. People are using plastic. They are dumping it anywhere and everywhere. And right now, since we are experiencing the pandemic, the problem is with the uh, things that we are using, the face masks, all those things, that the syringe that they are using for the vaccine. So it's really hard. We really need to wake up. And upon all this, Earth is heating up by two degrees. What will happen if it's very hot? What will happen to us? Uh, according to some research, 2.32 degree Fahrenheit, that is how much higher Earth's average temperature was in 2020 compared to the late 1800. There is a very big difference. If it's summer season, summer is really very hot. And for those countries who are experiencing um, cold weather, I think uh, the winter season is very, very cold. So we really have to raise awareness when it comes to climate change. What are we going to do to have a sustainable planet? So these are the questions that somehow runs into our mind. And maybe this could be a proper answer for that. Protecting our planets starts with you and me. So we need to take part of this. I think this is already mentioned many times, the reduce, reuse, recycle, and even uh, refuse, which is mentioned earlier in the discussion. This is very basic, but we really need to have this. We really need to put this in our mind that we really need to reuse, reduce, recycle, and refuse the usage of plastic. Let's conserve water. Uh, let's uh, choose sustainable and let's shop wisely. And of course, the very important thing, let's plant trees. Trees provide food and oxygen. This helps save energy, clean the air, and the most important thing, it helps combat a climate change. 
don't send chemicals into our waterways. And of course, the other things here that is mentioned is about energy efficient lights. There's a lot of things, but the most important thing is education. Let's educate. It says here that when you further your own education, you can help others understand the importance and value of our natural resources. And somehow it will not end up by just educating ourselves. Let's volunteer. Let's be a volunteer. Volunteer for a cleanup in your community, and somehow you can be get involved in protecting your watershed too. The earth is what we all have in common. This is right. This is all we have in common. We are living on the same earth. When I was young, just a little kid, I thought that uh, Philippines is in the other planet and other countries are in other planets. <laughs> That's that's what I thought when I was young. But we are. The, the thing that is common to us is Earth. So what do we need to do? And every environment is no one's property to destroy. Remember this. This is a very strong passage. Environment is no one's property to destroy. It's everyone's responsibility to protect. This is according to Mohit Agadi. And I strongly agree with this passage. But we, we don't need to destroy the environment. It is our response to protect our planet. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. That would be all. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for this beautiful presentation. And especially your last words on how, uh, you know, you said that environment is not someone's property to actually destroy. That was wonderful. Thank you so much for this whole fact of presentation. Yes, a beautiful, beautiful presentation and speech. Thank you. Congratulations. And as the next speaker for today's session, we have uh, Fatima Zabra from uh, India. Fatima, uh, the stage. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for such a wonderful introduction. <clears throat> Hi, Fatima Zabra from India. I'm a founder director of RK Foundation and uh, where I'm doing social service and uh, many of uh, awareness camp campaign I'm uh, organizing uh, from my foundation each year and uh, continuously my uh, work is uh, uh, cause uh, coverage of media coverage. So let me start uh, begin with uh, today's topic. Before uh, starting, I would like thanks to uh, Nada ma'am and uh, today's uh, moderator ma'am. And I'm extremely thankful to IIU team of IIU, entire team of IIU who is giving a wonderful opportunity to us uh, to uh, share our views about a uh, beautiful topic, uh, climate changing. It is a really burning topic. And day by day, you know, human beings who are responsible uh, in a majority of it, despite uh, how commonly uh, known this information is, it's uh, surprising how little importance people give to lasting impact of their seemingly tribal action. Over the years, so many people have uh, spoken about climate change. This includes world leaders, celebrities, politicians, and even common people like you and me. Uh, global warming is a definitely single greatest uh, environmental challenge that the planet uh, Earth is facing at present. It is uh, essential to understand the gravity of situation, the fuel which you use in order to power your homes, cars, businesses and uh, more is heating up the planet uh, faster than expected we regarding the hottest days and uh, decades over you know, what's alarming is that this is the temperature of the earth and has climbed to highest point it has ever been in the past 12000 years it only gets worse from here if we don't stop it now so my suggestion is that that the, as the, uh, we know that the, as the planet is getting hotter, we need to collectively act right now instead of waiting for more. The primary cause of global warming is of fossil fuels. Human begins, uh, sorry, human beings are addicted to burning them, which uh, produces coal, oil, greenhouse gases, and more. The power uh, plants, cars, and industries produce carbon dioxide, which stays in the atmosphere for five decades or more. This is the reason why the temperature of Earth rises. 
and due to rising of the temperature you know very well that different type of uh, problems are occurring so uh, so many different type of ways uh, are uh, um, available we should to take care about uh, global warming the time is now to do something to prevent global warming otherwise it will be in irreversible electricity and transportation contribute uh, largely to global warming so we that must begin here it is important to note that there is a no silver bullet and we must all come together to tackle global warming as a whole every home businesses industry individual effort is required to tackle this crisis as uh, we know that coal produces tons of carbon dioxide annually we need to find ways to clean up coal we can also tackle global warming by uh, beginning with uh, putting agriculture in the system we must encourage farmers to adopt the greener farming practices for instances they must till land less often and plant trees on vacant land i am also doing same thing being a educator what i am doing i am uh, giving training and i am giving suggestion to my students you please uh, uh, plant a tree at least you plant a tree on your birthday because uh, it will give uh, little help uh, to save environment and continuously till the date uh, uh approx uh, uh, no more than uh, uh, 10000 trees uh, my students uh, have planted and continuously uh, this trend is going on and i'm very thankful to team iiu uh, to giving such a wonderful opportunity to share my views about uh, uh, climate change thank you ma'am thank you all of you thank you great to you fatima for great speech uh, for being with us uh, always uh, enlighten us and uh, it is really honor to listen you here and to have you we know that it is a short time so thank you thank you thank you very much shan uh now everyone i I think yeah, I'm more to Yes. Uh okay, uh I now we will call uh he's waiting here, he's there here. Uh doctor uh just a moment, please. Let me check. Yes, Dr. Mosa. Yes, Dr. Asim Mosa, welcome. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity. My pleasure to be with you uh, today. I'm going to talk about the climate change. Uh, first, I would like to say that uh, the climate change is about simply, you know, 40 percentage of the deaths that results from, you know, air, water, and soil pollution. For example, you know, uh, in France, you know, it's having because of tourism is 130 people, you know, like uh, get victim. But you know, at the same year, we have like 48,000. Uh, died because of the you know polluted air so we have to you know to concentrate about you know uh, this uh, issue so the you know polluted air hurts the you know water and and the social resources and a lot to the you know of uh, bad things happen for example we have the water today so we have uh, to take care of it and also you know resulting in a 3 million potentially the you know polluted site in Europe for example so we have to you know to concentrate about this issue of climate change we have to you know to protect our ecosystem because they you know uh, all we live in this environment also we have to protect the humanity because they you know we need to work toward protecting the environment uh, uh, also we have to do you know to protect our forest because they you know another huge factor that is at risk the the forest uh, the last thing so we have to you know it's our own, uh, moral obligation about this environment because when we live in this environment we all have to you know to work for this climate to change to save the environment to save the earth also we have the you know to to hand over the you know the earth to the new generation in a better way because we have a lot of things like covid-19 we have the you no know, bad in the economy or something like that so we have 
to consultate about you know to to hand over the earth in a better way for the new generation so you know there's a lot of things you know can do for to protect the earth like you choose to use and recycle a lot of you know with uh, excellent speaker to talk about this uh, volunteer you know educate conserve water a lot of issue we have to do it you know planet at three because at three is good to provide food and oxygen don't send the chemical uh, bike more a lot of things we have to do do you know for this you know climate change for also do you know recycling switch and uh, and uh, and also do you know the study says that about 74 percent of more than 200 influencer and in environment agrees that you know new technology like artificial intelligence will help you know to solve environment issue i'm going to consult about the technology of the 21 century cloud of everything and 64 is uh, that the Internet of Things will also take an important role for helping this environment issue. We have to concentrate or in technology. Do you know we have to uh, do you know to think out of box? We uh, also do you know there's an impact of technology and will help a, a lot in agriculture and construction and energy and water and resource. A lot of things do you know will, will help. So we have to develop the renewable energy saving the you know and danger wide live and adopting a smart lifestyle so we have also like the you know 10 technology that will help you know in climate change like solar glass graphene planet-based plastic fake meat but patterns environment sensor smart grids carbon capture nuclear fission and artificial intelligence i'm going to concentrate on artificial intelligence and iot and the you know uh, big data that will help you know in climate change uh, because uh, we have, you know, a short time, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm don't have the time to talk about, you know, each item. So the you know climate change, you know, uh, affect, you know, a lot and uh, damage uh, at our home, expensive home insurance, outdoor work, a lot of, you know, bad things because of climate change. Uh, what is the cause and the, the you know effect of uh, climate change? I, I think that a lot of speakers talk about this burning, you know, forests, cutting down forests, a lot of things, you know will affect the climate change. How do we solve climate change? You know, we keep the you know, forests in the ground, invest in renewable energy, switch to sustainable transport, you know, uh, also improve farming, restore nature, protect forests like, the, you know, uh, in Amazon. How do we stop the, you know, climate change? We have to speak, the, you know, we have to reduce uh, the, you know, water waste by new technology, also, the, you know, buy better as well, and, uh, the pull plugs. A lot of you know things we have uh, to do regarding this uh, uh, issue. Can the climate be shaped? It, it, uh, you know, it remains possible to eliminate this. You know, because as you know, roughly from 1.5 to 1.6 degree, this would affect the worst consequence of climate change. We have you know to concentrate to solve this issue, and uh, I am very happy that Egypt will you know host the climate change. You know, with United Nations in November this year. Uh, what are the five solutions to global uh, change? We have to improve in energy efficiency and, do you know, foil economy, increase in wind and solar. Of course, we have to, do you know, to think out of box to use also the new technology. Uh, also, government can help, you know, in a climate change uh, to reduce greenhouse gases emissions. There's a responsibility for uh, government. How can we save our Earth? Uh, a lot of speakers talk about uh, reduce, reuse, and recycle, volunteer. So consider it also a lot of speaker talk about it. Also, I'm going to consider it about the, you know, IoT that helped, you know, in climate uh, crisis, because, you know, in the 21 century, we have the technology in the 21 century, we use the smart device and, you know, smart, you know, things that can, you know, monitor everything and can control everything, can help, you know, in there climate change. For example, you know, uh, IoT can now. help a lot. Please. Hello? Please come to the conclusion. Your presentation is not moving. You please. Okay. okay. I, yeah, IoT can help, you know, to track the real time data. Also, you know, uh, uh, for, you know, like uh, reduce the greenhouse by 3.9 uh, percentage uh, regarding, you know, we use uh, new technology like artificial intelligence will help a lot because, you know, it's productive and 24 uh, times seven. Also, you know, we can, AI can help, you know, 
we use uh, like photo print identification technology to monitor the you know spices also ocean data alliance we can use global fishing watch to help with the satellite data to identify uh, illegal fishing we can use uh, ai application we can use high resolution maps to predict and prepare for the future flows and also we, the, this is a new technology can help you know for climate change also big data can help you know to fight climate change faster because of you know big data can you know uh, monitor the all the real time and you can help a, a lot for uh, climate change we so i you know i advise we can use the climate change. and you have like software like global forest watch uh, we use it in amazon also we we can use Google Earth engines that provide a catalog for the satellite, also for monitor water risk. So we use the, you know, uh, all the software that, you know, depends on artificial intelligence, IoT, and uh, big data. Uh, so uh, this new technology, you know, uh, the biggest challenge that our planet is currently facing, you know, to get benefits from this technology for, on our daily life and business to save the Earth. Also, we can use, you know, AI plus IoT to reduce e-waste, you know, in millions of electronic devices, or also to, to produce system to monitor the hardware of IoT and AI. Uh, also, we can use uh, this IoT and AI for farming sustainability uh, by using the power of IoT and I uh, uh, and uh, artificial intelligence to change the agriculture, uh, you know, sir? methods. Hello. Hello? Sir, so excuse me, sir. That's, yeah, yours that's was why, in you know, power pack. Yeah, excuse me. So yours was in power pack presentation. Oh, you know, you are adopting the, uh, IoT. Uh, Doctor Asim, please. Uh, yeah. We are going. Yeah. Please, thank you. Great presentation. Thank, Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so yes, much. Because of yes, time. we need to move, please. Uh, I know you okay, can talk. Please, Dr. Asim. Okay, thank you so much. My pleasure to be with yes, you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank Maria Elvina Putri, you can start. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maria Elvina Putri Damayanti from Indonesia, currently studying at the high school in the city of Jember. Maria, please, uh, Maria, please, can you put your cat a little, little get to see? We want to see you. Great. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. My name is Maria Alvina Mayanti from Indonesia, uh, currently studying at high school in the city of Jember, is Java province named Senior High School 1 Jember. First, I would like to give my appreciation and gratitude for this chance of being a speaker at this International Internship University and International Student Development Council's International Conference, Science Solution and Solidarity for a Lifeable Planet. Okay, in this opportunity, I would like to express my point of view about one of Earth problems that causing climate change, deforestation. Okay, uh, let's move to our topic. Uh, deforestation is an activity that change forest area into non-forested land permanently to support human activity. Uh, deforestation can cause problems or impacts on the environment. There are factors of deforestation, either human or natural origin. Uh, we will talk about specific causes or factors of deforestation. The first one is agriculture. According to FAO or Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, uh, agriculture causes 80% of deforestation because uh, agriculture needs a lot of space to grow food, fibers, or biofuel. Uh, maybe many of you are confused. Why do we need large areas to uh, for agriculture? Because in agriculture, we need to raise farm animals and grow their food either. The second one is settlement expansion. I think we will grow and we will have offspring. Uh, then if we live in cities, we need large cities so they can host more people. 
and the last one is natural cause. Uh, it is forest fire. In this period, temperature become higher and higher, coupled with drought in the dry season. That's not only causing deforestation, but also causing air pollution. The factors uh, are not stopped there. There are still a lot of causes of deforestation, such as industry or mining. Uh, okay, next, uh, what things can we do for fix that? Uh, we can start from little things, such as grow our plants or trees in our house and save paper we will use. Uh, when you grow your own plants or trees, uh, they will donate oxygen in the air and that will make the air become fresh. Uh, imagine how if there's a lot of people who grow their own plants and trees. Uh, I think the air temperature will decrease and not be as hot as it used to be. Uh, and then you save when you save your paper, uh, there are no more wasted paper because paper is made from trees by the paper industry. And it's not that easy to grow some trees in the short time. That's why uh, we have to work together to save our forest and our earth. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. It is amazing. Listen to the students. Aisan, what do you say? I am like, you know, the students, ma'am, they are really into this. And I'm very glad to have met you. And I'm very glad that you guys are diving deeper and deeper into the research. Thank you so much, Maria, Thank for this you. wonderful power packed presentation again. Thank you. And I think, yes, so for the next presentation of this session, we have Elnora Dadoshwa from Azerbaijan. Elnora, ma'am, if you're here, please share the stage. Yes, I can see you. Yes, we see her, you see her. Elnora, yeah, okay. but she didn't hear us. Oh, yeah, she I'm is. so sorry. I hear you, but I have already shared my presentation. I have oh, already we don't at the beginning. See the presentation. No, not <laughs> no. Sorry, we don't see your presentation. No, she sees that she is having some oh, errors. With that presentation. Yes. No, I have already had my presentation yes, at the was. beginning. Yes, 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 yes. It's okay. <laughs> yes, yes. It's okay. Today I was a great one. Yes. We have here uh, Sir Manfred uh, Mulbach, please. Do you want to uh, enlighten us with your speech? No, so please go ahead. We are waiting you. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, let's see, Neb Neba, what do you say on this sessions today? It was an amazing session and I am very happy and honored to be a part of this conference. It's my first time, uh, but it was very fruitful for me. Thank you. Thank to you. all our speakers. Yes, all our great speakers. But I see here, uh, Pakistan, CN. Do you uh, uh, do you need to speak today? Yes, uh, I think he is already interested to share the stage. So yes, I sir. Said Mansoor please, Hussain. please. Yes, good evening, yeah, everyone. Is this occasion yes. with your voice? Yes, yes, we hear you. Why don't you? Yeah, good evening, uh, Mem Nada and the entire team of IU. Thank you so much uh, for such a wonderful opportunity and to discuss the global issue. Shaka, and we need to solve Shaka. that. We, we want to present yes. our great, respected Dr. Mansoor Shah. Welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Mem Nada. I need to speak about it instead of presenting it. So am I allowed to speak on the topic of the global warming and changes? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Great. We hear you. Continue. Okay. Yes. So when we talk about the global warming, we mean to say that like the disturbance of the temperature, uh, like globally, and when we are going to disturb the natural resources, 
uh, that then there is you know the cause of the global warming. And when we're talking about our history, like between 1880, the year the accurate record keeping begin, and 1980, it rose on average 0.07 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit. It's like increase in temperature. Uh, however, like this temperature increases annually by 0.18 to 0.32. So we need to control it by our global, you know, uh, collective efforts by a plantation, by planting more trees uh, to provide awareness the way the IIU is providing awareness to the people that how to save the mother earth uh, and how to make this uh, earth more, you know, protective against those like uh, CFCs and those environments. Now, when we're talking about the the, the causative agent of global warming, we, we know that it's like carbon dioxide, CFCs, chlorofluorocarbon, or like we use our daily based gadgets, the refrigerator, the air conditions, our sprays, they just, you know, like eliminate the carbon monoxide, the carbon dioxide, the CFCs, it eventually damages ourselves for long term enough. Like we all think about it that this, uh, this earth actually need us, uh, being their son, being their daughter, and to protect us because we need to think that how to protect our generation and only possible if you are going to save our earth. So when you're talking about the important part that how the global warming is linked to extreme weather. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen and the important uh, respected audience of IAU, uh, scientists agree that the earth's rising temperature are fueling longer and hotter heat waves, more frequent, heavier rainfall and more powerful hurricane. Well, we get back to the history. In 2015, for example, scientists concluded that the lengthy drought of California, the state's worst water shortage in 1200 years had been intensified by 15 to 20% by global warming. That was alarming issue. They also said that the odds of the similar drought happening in the future roughly doubled over the past century. And in 2016, the National Academics of Science, Engineering and Medicine announced that we can now confidently attribute some extreme weather events like heat waves, droughts, heavy participation and directly to climate change. Let's get back to the conclusion that how to control uh, this pollution entirely and how we can become important part of that climate change to make it more positive. Well, the impact of global warming is felt everywhere. Extreme heat waves cause tens of thousands of deaths around the world and in alarming signs of even to come. Antarctica has lost nearly 4 trillion metric tons of ice since 1990. The rate of loss could spend up burning fuels at our current pace. Some experts say that causing sea level to rise several meters in the next 50 to 150 years, wreaking havoc on coastal communities worldwide. Last but not the least, we need to focus on, on one principle, feel, focus, and fly. Feel the problem around you, how to make this climate more positive. Focus on the steps, the way the I is taking steps, like they are arranging international webinars, calling the people next part of the world and doing the global effort appreciate, and then fly with the goals. When we get our pure environment, uh, the environment we like for our generation, the environment full of transportation, greenery everywhere, then I think that our purpose will be fulfilled. Thank you so much once again to everyone. Thanks, Bernada. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. And, you know, mainly I have to say that, you know, your last words like uh, fly, follow and, you know, the, those three F words that you said, it was wonderful. Like you really went into the topic and even though um, you have said many research data today with us, it was very insightful that you dragged everyone's Thank attention you. at last. Thank you so much. Thank, sir. You. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And yes, I believe we are on to the conclusion of uh, today's event. Yes, I hold yes, over the but, mic. Uh, yes, but just a minute, uh, please. Uh, we have here our amazing speakers. So I want to hear first their conclusion of the session today. Yes, great. Miss Mira, an amazing speech, amazing presentation. Uh, from Philippines, we want to hear one more message from you. Okay, so um, we all need to be part of the awareness, I think. So as an educator, as a fellow educator, so we are on the right track. I think we need to walk the talk. We're, we're telling this and then we need to tell them 
we need to show them that uh, it's really needed and somehow it's very important to practice it daily because small thing matters. That's all. Thank you. Great. Mabelie, what do you say, Mabelie? I think as a teacher, we, we should be uh, a role model to our students. Uh, let us educate our students to participate in the programs that could help our country, not only our country, but our planet Earth. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are not, we are still not finished. We have one, we have a presenter here, an eminent speaker. He's very silent. So, Sir Manfred. Please enlighten us with your speech today. Manfred, please unmute yourself. Okay, uh, thank you so much for uh, letting me in. I'm grateful to join you guys from Liberia. It's a pleasure. So uh, can you please allow me to share my screen? Uh, you can share the screen, but uh, you have a bad network, I see. So please, uh, maybe you can only speak. Okay, try to see something. Uh... Yes, try, but not sure. Okay, can you all see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, wonderful. Okay, I'm Manfred Moba, and the Chief Executive Officer in the Fund for the Center for the Advancement of Technology Education, uh, CASTED for short. And I just want to thank the Internship International University for having this uh, second edition of the Climate Change. Today happens to be the 10th of October. And basically, I'm going to be speaking on car emission effect on climate uh, global warming. Uh, the use of uh, the abundant gases has been uh, uh, something that been uh, occupying or been uh, happening on uh, yeah, our planet that is on Earth. And then there are not much people trying to understand why is it that the 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 abundance gas uh, in the greenhouse keep increasing on a daily basis, uh, and as well as affecting the atmosphere. You know, this is actually the cause of the the emission of the car that happens on a daily basis, on the monthly basis. Every time it keeps happening, the increase in the the abundance of greenhouses in the atmosphere, uh, as well as the human activities. I amplifying the Earth natural greenhouse effect. Visually, all estimated scientists agree that this increase is heat trapping gases in the main reasons for, for the 1.8 uh, Fahrenheit to uh, about 1.0 degrees Celsius reached in the global average temperature since the late 19th century. The oxides, machines, natural oxide, ozones, as well as various uh, chuck bonds and all humor estimated heat appearing gases, among other yeah, uh, the planet. Among these carbon dioxide is of grain concern to scientists because it exerts a large overwhelming fluence than the greenhouse combined. So you see a picture of uh, uh, what is uh, uh, what uh, the uh, the planet has been affected by the car emission effect on uh, uh, our globe and the planet at large. Just give me a minute. Uh, Just give me a minute, please. Uh, I want to have No problem. No problem. We will wait. Thank you. I'm back. Thank you. Uh, let me see.
So as percent humans are putting an estimated 9.5 billion meter tons of carbon into the atmosphere. So you see the range of uh, 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 carbon uh, dioxide. Uh, uh, professor, uh, we don't see, we see your screen. My screen? Yes, we see, we see your desktop. I see the IIU uh, Global Leader Award. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, okay. I didn't. Can you didn't start, try again to share, please? Okay. Let me try to do that. Yes. Now we see your presentation Car emission effect yeah. on climate global warming. Okay. Can you now see the picture? Now we see only your photo. Let's let's wait. You are you are sharing. Let's wait to see. Okay. Will it open? Not yet. Let Let's wait. Uh, it seems as if he has some internet connection, sir. There are some errors with respect to his connectivity. Yes, yes, yes. Sir, you can just talk. If you cannot present it, it's totally fine. I think that he don't hear us. Sir Manfred, do you hear us? I think that we lost him. We lost him, but we see he has an amazing presentation. He has a really uh, serious job, serious working on this. So uh, great, really great. Uh, maybe he will join us. So we will be here a few minutes because uh, who didn't speak? Okay, yeah, you are come, you back. come back, please. Can you, uh, can you only speak without presentation? Because you see, you get out. Okay, no problem, no problem. Let me just continue. Thank you. Okay. As a best, uh, like I was saying, the, the, the number of uh, um, tons that have been used by human uh, being normally on a daily basis about 9.5 billion. So which caused a whole lot of, uh, 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 effect on the uh, uh, the globe as well as the planet, and uh, the burning of these fossils and another 1.5 billion true deforestations are all learned parts of the human produced carbon forest and all of vegetations absorbed around 3.2 meter ton per year. So annually, we got uh, both from our uh, our frustration where in people uh, burn bushes as they the emission about 3.2 billion of that 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 the the, the it occupies in or uh, damaging our planet you know that of which is is so so uh uh this hard for us as a uh, trip a net of five point of five billion meter tons of human produced carbon dioxide remains in the atmosphere each year raising the global average carbon dioxide concentration by 2.3 parts per million per year since that happens uh, that have been happening since about 1750s <laughs> the human increase in the burning gas is seeing, uh, uh, that the atmosphere is home for best so both uh, uh, the car emission and that of the, the human activities of these things affect our planet about 50 percent I would like to say uh, climate change is a uh, uh, we all need to combat and we all need to see how best we can fret it and uh, create more awareness and uh, um, push impact on it so that our youth, our, uh, our, earth, our kids that are in school as well can benefit from it. So once again, I want to say thank you. God bless you. God bless Liberia. God bless India. God bless Africa. And God bless the world. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was great. It was great to see you present, even though there were a lot of uh, network connectivity issues. But then it was a wonderful presentation from a wonderful person. That's you. Thank you, sir. Over to you, Nadamam. Oh. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
So uh, I think that we now really come to the end of the session. We come to the end of this uh, five amazing days. Uh, we hear uh, what to say. Yes, amazing, awesome, unique event by the International Internship University. Uh, I want to say special thanks to our Vice Chancellor, Ms. Corina Sujdea, the project director, for this second ICC. I, somebody wants to decline my video. Don't touch nothing, please. Somebody says here, please don't touch no buttons. I'm recording and in live. Oh my God. So I want to say a special thanks to our project director, Vice Chancellor, Ms. Corina Sujdea for this great project, for the project last year, for this year. Uh, what to say, Miss Corina, a loving daughter, wife, mother, and an inspiration to those around here. When human beings experience trauma or several life treating situation, it is not uncommon for their lives to unravel. Having a great passion, is to serve the needy and be a role model to those who have been so a traumatic, a stressful experience. This is something that Ms. Corina Sujdea preaches and used as a core member in her, uh, in her work. Uh, I see here, uh, please uh, to help others. She is always here to help others in the need. So thank you, dear Miss Corina Sujdea, for this great project and for these five days. Now, I want to thank our eminent, great academic academicians, researchers, science students, scholars, keynote speakers, special guests, honorific guests uh, who are here today. Thank you, dear respected Professor Charles for being with us from the IAU, the Africa, IAU Africa head. Thanks to my great master of the conference, our great moderator, great Zainab from the, uh, great Ailash from the India. Today, the five day of the five days event. As we start, we will finish on the same way, right here, right now. Protecting planet starts with you. The ball is now in our court. Our planet is our future. Sorting the science, asking the science. We know that we need to act. At these five days, we show what we are doing. We show what is the mission, what is the vision of IAU. And also, I want to say there is one person behind this event and all events of the IAU. That is our sir, our great founder, Sir Piyush Pandey. Thank you for this amazing event. Thank you for all what you are doing for this world, for the education and for bringing the revolution in education. Uh, I cannot say today, see you tomorrow in this event, but yes, I can say, See you tomorrow because tomorrow IAU has a unique event, has a unique event and also the event for first time in the world on the topic of the metaverse. You will have a chance to be in a film and see how can make a film. So till tomorrow, stay safe, stay blessed. And let's continue protecting our planet. Let's continue protecting our planet with IAU, with great IAU and all educators around the globe. And yes, after this, we are coming with the second International Sustainable Development Goal Conference. Um, it is open for the re re registration. Please fill the form, please 
choose one SDG, you can be a speaker or moderator. Also, uh, great, uh, great teachers, great professors, you can, uh, you can uh, give to your student to be a speaker. We would, we enjoy these days listening to our amazing students. So thank you. Uh, bye bye. Till next year. Yeah. Next year with this third ICC 2023. Bye bye bye. Thank you, Professor Nada. God bless you. Thank bye you. Bye bye bless you. Thank you, Mr. Charles, bye. and all thank God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nada, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good one. Thank you. Thank you.